During December every year, Ushuaia, Argentina, the southernmost city in the world, just below the 54th southern latitude, receives over 17 hours of daylight, with a maximum of 17 hours and 20 minutes occurring on the winter solstice. Globe earthers often claim this would be impossible on a flat earth, arguing that a local revolving spotlight sun should not be able to illuminate such a southern location for so long. To begin with, extended hours of daylight in the southern latitudes during December is exactly as expected with the flat earth model, since the winter solstice is precisely when the sun makes its southern outermost circuit along the Tropic of Capricorn. Ushuaia also boasts having the shortest day in the world every year on the summer solstice, which again is exactly as expected with the flat earth model, because summer solstice is precisely when the sun makes its northern innermost circuit along the Tropic of Cancer. Globe defenders often concede this point, but insist that a local revolving spotlight sun making its fastest outermost circle should still not be able to illuminate such a southern location for so long, arguing that in order to follow the annual lighting pattern displayed by timeanddate.com, the actual shape of the area illuminated would have to change throughout the year, increasing as the sun moves southwards. This too, however, is accounted for in the Vedic Flat Earth model, which claims that the sun during its annual spiral journey from tropic to tropic steadily increases altitude and speed for six months until reaching its southern peak during the winter solstice, then steadily decreases altitude and speed for the next six months until reaching its northern trough during the summer solstice. Modern sextant experiments are needed to confirm or deny this claim, but if true, then this explains why the sun is able to illuminate southern locations for so long. Also, by placing a glass dome paperweight over a standard flat earth map, then shining a small flashlight onto it at varying heights, the actual shape of the illumination pattern shifts and changes in precisely the way shown by the annual timeanddate.com graphic display. When the flashlight shines over the northern inner portion of the map, the illuminated area takes on a standard spotlight shape. But as the flashlight moves outwards, shining over the southern portion of the map, the illuminated area becomes increasingly crescent-shaped, allowing for much longer periods of daylight during this time. Therefore, if our earth plane is actually covered by a crystalline translucent dome firmament, as claimed by many ancient cultures, then this lumination cycle is certainly possible, and makes perfect sense. Furthermore, research being conducted on the ionization of inert gases in the upper atmosphere is opening another avenue of understanding for how light is likely propagated in our realm. As the sun approaches, an electromagnetic field is applied to a volume of gas, generating highly charged electrons, which collide, causing chemical reactions, generating all the various colored lights seen during sunrises. Gases found in the upper atmosphere, such as hydrogen, helium, neon, nitrogen, and argon, all generate these electromagnetic fields when ionized, producing different colored lights. Argon, for example, typically generates blue or violet light, neon generates red and orange, while helium generates more white and yellow light. And their specific combinations, when excited by the sun as a catalyst, is likely the cause of the many colors seen in the sky. If this theory is true, then sunlight and daylight are two very different but related things, with the former being the cause of the latter, and allowing daylight to extend much farther and longer than simple direct sunlight. With reference to the Ushuaia question, if daylight extends further than direct sunlight, as far as ionized gases in the ionosphere can illuminate, then this again corroborates with the phenomenon of extended daylight hours in areas with higher concentrations of these elements. If the Earth is covered by a dome firmament, with its peak above the North Pole, then that would mean the further south traveled, the lower the height of the dome, and therefore the more compressed and spread out these gases found in the upper atmosphere would be, once again equating to, and explaining, extended daylight hours in the south.